um, Magnum, not Magnum the ice cream or anything. It's Magnum M A G N one, and I'm a Ghanaian producer, mainstream producer. Produced a lot of hits in Ghana. Blue Paper and Tim is the um, was my it's my label actually. I set it up with my little brother and then a friend. But right now I'm trying to switch it to a different label. So that's the label I'm, I'm signed to right now. Yeah, yeah. I just came across the software, um, which I started just Fruity Loops, which I still use to now. Yeah, in 2007 I think, and then I just started playing with it, playing with it, and then started recording my little brother's friends, started making some money off it. So that's how I began. And then because I knew I knew a couple of people in the industry at that time, Lil Shaker and Richie, yeah, I think I knew I could make a living off it. I feel like a beat maker just makes a beat and then sends it out to the artist. But a producer actually um, is involved in the writing process or directing the artist, um, finding the right backup vocalist, whatever, finding the right feature for the song. So. That's, that's what I think is the difference between a beat maker and a producer. I've been in the mainstream business, produced for, um, produced two, produced a lot of songs on two of um, the albums. The last two albums I won, album of the year in Ghana. That's Sarkodias, um Psychology. I produced the most, um, I, I was a producer who had the most credits. I had like eight songs, productions, and then I mixed the master in about 15 hours. And then Adam's mass production album. No, I mean uh, Books and Rhymes. I produced eight songs and then, and then I mixed about ten of them. Yeah. I never duplicate my sounds. I never do. I try to switch every time. I try to switch every time. Yeah. Maybe once or twice I've tried that. But if you come here thinking I'm going to produce a beat like an R&B for you, it's not going to work. Yeah. Okay, me becoming an artist. Something that's within within me, but um, right now I'm, I'm trying to get my stuff out because I have a lot of songs produced. I've produced a lot of songs this year, and not many of them have even come out. So it's out of frustration. I'm going to do that because I need to get my stuff out. I could try getting an artist, but I'm not really seeing anyone who has what I want. So I just flip myself into an artist, and then I'll do it. So I could put out. Because usually when you produce, I produce a sound I feel is convenient for now. The artist will put it out like a year later or eight months later. So I just want to have control of, control of um, my work, like how I put stuff out. I just want everybody to be looking out for me right now. Yeah, and that's how I intend to do it. Yeah. I mean, um, music is supposed to entertain, so. And right now, all, almost everything I'm producing is to get you um, hyped up and to get you excited. I'm not really, I just realized I'm focused too much on um, making hits. Yeah, so mostly I just like people to get happy. And then, but I'm sure soon, in a, in a few months, I'll just switch and then try and get to do more mellow and musical stuff. Yeah. And I want you to hear my beat and just, just wonder who made it and how you made it. Yeah. <laughs> you need a music I listen to. I listen to a lot of music. And growing up, my dad used to listen to a lot of music too. So reggae, orchestral music, jazz, African jazz, a whole lot of genres. So I just, and when I'm listening, I just listen to everything. Rock, pop, anything. I just mix it all up. Yeah. And I listen. So when I'm producing, I can just pick something from this, a little bit from that, a little bit from this, a little bit from that, and it becomes something. Yeah. Me. At every point in time, I had someone influencing me in a way. But I think the biggest would be Vibes Cartel. Yeah, Vibes Cartel. I don't know for some straight. There's Vibes Cartel in terms of his. Um, okay, let's say the artists will be Vibes Cartel, the producers will be um, Scott Storch and Dr. Dre. I made a beat. I made a beat. I, have a, I had a couple of beats down, and because I work with Lil Shaker, he was just. He came around, he listened to a beat, he made a song to it. He made a song to it, then Adam came, um, he also listened to the beats, heard that beat, said he liked it, I was like, oh, 
Lil Shika has already done a whole tour. So then he was like, he listened to Shika's so one, he listened to it. Then he called he called Shika and explained to him that he wanted to do something with it, wanted to promote it, shoot a video and everything. And so he chopped off some parts of Lil Shika's um, hook and his verses, and then he put a different hook to it. And then he featured Ice Queen. Ice Queen was in Ghana. Ice Queen is a um, Zambian artist. So she was in Ghana at that time, and then she uh, hopped on it too. Yeah. Before um, Queenie, everyone thought I was just a hip hop producer. I mean, I was producing Afrobeats, but everyone thought my Afrobeats sounded not like the regular Afrobeats. We, um, cause like I said, I could keep blending genres, so it sounded weird. Even Queenie sounded weird in the beginning, but one day started listening to it. And when it was promoted, well, it became a hit. Okay.